that trouble? You're... you're... Fish food. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to compare and contrast the stories of Arion, Jonah, and Pinocchio. So the question then become, which stories came first? Was it Arion that came first? Was it Jonah that came first? Or was it Pinocchio that came first for this type of story? The book of Jonah was probably written down roughly between 793 and 758 BCE. Arion was an ancient Greek musician and poet and his life can be traced back roughly around 657 to 625 BCE, before the book of Jonah. So what exactly is the story of Arion? Arion of Lesbos, a son of Poseidon and the Nymphonia, was a master of the lyre and invented the dithramb in Dionysus' honor. One day, his patron, Periander, tyrant of Corinth, reluctantly gave him permission to visit Tanaris in Sicily, where he had been invited to compete in a musical festival. Arion won the prize, and his admirers showered on him so many rich gifts that these excited the greed of the sailors engaged to bring him back to Corinth. We much regret, Arion, that you will have to die, remarked the captain of the ship. What crime have I committed? asked Arion. You are too rich, replied the captain. Spare my life, and I will give you all my prizes, Arion pleaded. You would only retract your promise on reaching Corinth, said the captain, and so would I in your place. A forced gift is no gift. Very well, cried Arion resignedly, but pray allow me to sing a last song. When the captain gave his permission, Arion, dressed in his finest robe, mounted on the prow, where he invoked the gods with impassioned strains and then leapt overboard. The ship sailed on. However, his song had attracted a school of music-loving dolphins, one of which took Arion on his back, and that evening he overtook the ship and reached the port of Corinth several days before it cast anchor there. Periander was overjoyed at his miraculous escape, and the dolphin, loath to part from Arion, insisted on accompanying him to court, where it soon succumbed to a life of luxury. Arion gave it a splendid funeral. When the ship docked, Periander sent for the captain and crew, whom he asked with pretended anxiety for news of Arion. He has been delayed at Tenaris, the captain answered, by the lavish hospitality of the inhabitants. Periander made them all swear at the dolphin's tomb that this was the truth and then suddenly confronted them with Arion. Unable to deny their guilt, they were executed on the spot. Apollo later set the images of Arion and his lyre among the stars. Now let's go into the story about Jonah and the giant fish, largely because when I was younger, I had a particular fondness for this type of story, because when I was younger, I used to watch Veggie Tales about this particular stories all the time, and so it's like one of my favorite stories within the Bible. So what exactly are the details for that particular story? Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. 
Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea roared and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2 Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul, the depth closed me round about, the weeds were wrapped about my head, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, the earth with her bars was about me for ever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. As you guys can see, there are some similarities and differences between the stories because for starters, both characters are on a boat. Both characters ask to be off the boat, but the major difference would be that for the case of Jonah, he actually prayed to the God of the Bible to get out the belly of the fish. Meanwhile, it seems as though that Aaron used music to actually attract the dolphins to actually save him from being actually drowned from the water. Now let's go directly towards Pinocchio. Now this particular edition is not necessarily based upon the Disney adaptation. It's actually based upon the original story that was published in Italian. Pinocchio is thrown into the sea, eaten by fishes, and becomes marionette once more. As he swims to land, he is swallowed by the terrible shark. Pinocchio, as soon as he said goodbye to his good friend attorney, totter away in the darkness to begin to walk as well as he could towards the faint light which glowed in the distance. As he walked, his feet splashed in a pool of greasy and slippery water where there has been a heavy smell of fish fried on oil that Pinocchio thought it was lent. As you guys can see, the major difference between this version and the Disney adaptation of the story is that Pinocchio actually gets swallowed by a giant whale. Meanwhile, for this original story that's translated from Italian, it seems as though that the thing that actually ate Pinocchio was actually a giant shark. Not to mention in earlier translations of the Bible, it seems as though that the translators use whale instead of giant fish, which might have influenced the stuff that happened behind the productions for the Disney adaptation. It's not just that though, but it also seems as though that those particular translated choices also led to the story that we see in the Quran too. So also was Jonah among those sent by us. When he ran away like a slave from captivity to the ship, fully elated, he agreed to cast lots and he was condemned. Then the whale did swallow him, and he done acts worthy of blame. Had it not been that he repented and glorified Allah, he certainly would have remained inside of the fish till the day of resurrection. But what do you guys think about these comparisons? Tell me in the comment section down below. 
And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.